Hello everybody and welcome to this video. My name is Nauri Radwan and today we are going to talk about values. I have noticed that there's one mistake a lot of new artists make when it comes to values. So I thought why not talk about it in today's video. So without any further ado, let's start with the tutorial. First, before we jump to the mistake, let's explain the values uh, real quick. Values in art determines how light or dark something is on a scale of white to black or determines how light or dark an area is in your artwork. This is the value scale in gradient and this is the value scale uh, that's not with the gradient, it's uh, in uh, percents from 0% to 100%. 0% being the darkest dark and 100% being the brightest bright. As I told you before in previous videos, with the values, this is your eyes or this is how you view your artwork, the scene of your artwork. The objects that's close to your eyes uh, in the artwork will get more contrast and will show a lot of details. The further these objects will go in the distance, the, the more they will lose details and the more they will lose contrast, as you can see right here. The reason why I said determines how bright or dark an area in your artwork and I didn't say objects because an object has uh, different shades of gray in it. Uh, first being, uh, just a minute. I'm going to draw that real quick. So this is a single object in your artwork. That object will have the dark areas and the mid-tones and the bright areas and the shadows. Shadows and dark areas are different things. Every part of these areas has different values, like the mid-tones has 50% to 40% uh, in our poll right here. And the dark areas are on 20 and the bright areas are on 88 and the shadows on 0. This is the value scale right here and it determines how light, uh, how bright or dark these areas are. And right here I gave this example of this mountain. As you can see, when it's closer, let's say you are standing right here and seeing this mountain uh, rocks, you will find that there is a lot of contrast and you will see more details. And this mountain is far from you. You will, uh, it will be affected by the atmosphere and the air and the haze and the fog and all of this thing and it will start to vanish the more it gets further. Here we have the value range. We have the low key, the high key and the middle key. The low keys are being used in the very dark artworks. The high key are being used in the very bright artworks. The middle key are being used in um, like let's say the works that are not very bright and not very dark and I have examples to show you with the low key you use the range from 0% being the darkest dark all the way to 50% uh, close to 60% but that doesn't mean that you can't go all the way up it just means that the majority of your artwork or the most range that you will use in your artworks is going to be from 0% for, for to uh, 50% with the high key, uh, you can use from the bright sprite 100% all the way to 50% and you can go further. But the most range you will use is from 50% to 100%. And with the middle key, you will use from 20% closer to 10 all the way up to 80 closer to 90. And of course, you can use 100 and 0% uh, but the majority of the artwork will be from... 20 all the way to 80 and of course we have an example to show here we have these artworks i got from art stations and this is the names of the artists so please if you like the artworks make sure to visit them and show them some appreciation these two artworks are example for the low key these are for the mid key and these are for the high key and this is for the full range so right now as you can see just use your eyes, you don't have to use the scale really. When you look at these artworks, you'll immediately uh, realize that these works or notice that these works are really dark, like they have the very dark contrast on them. With these two, they are not too bright, they are not too dark, they are just in the middle, as you can see, very resting to the eyes. And these two, just by looking at them, you can tell like they are the these two artworks are very bright. And this use the full range from 0% all the way to 
as you can see the closer objects gets uh, darker and uh, which it will has it will have more contrast and the further object will be brighter and less contrast and less details same with this ones and this one i just add black and white adjustment layer and by zooming out you can tell these are very dark these are in the mid and these are bright and these are 50 50 between the dark and the bright if we zoom in on this artwork by dong biao and we sample an area from the darkest dark for example it goes all the way down to three and the midtones are on 25 and the sorry and the bright areas are on 52 so as you can see it he used the range from 50 percent all the way down to three percent which is the low key and with these two the brightest area is on 80 and the darkest areas are on 50 closer to 20 of course and with these ones the majority of the artworks are these white clouds that are too bright that goes to all the way up to 90, uh, five, 95 this one's too all the way to 96 and with this of course the darkest dark being on 7 5 and the bright areas are on 19 that means he used the full range and with this one too and this is the names of the artist it's important to know that uh, values uh, will be affected by the colors and the saturation or let's say the hues and the saturation here are the hues as you can see they are just the names of the colors from red to yellow to green to blue to pink to red and here we have the saturation and here we have the brightness or the value okay so uh, it's important to note that colors has different values so if i add a black and white uh, adjustment layer and these have this these colors by the way ha has the same uh, amount of saturation as you can see it's uh, on 100 100 100 and 100 even though they have the same saturation but they are different in the hues so if we add a black and white adjustment layer you'll see that the blue has the darkest value the yellow has the brightest value and the green and the red have the same value so if you go to this layer right here and we change the hue you can see it's changing these uh, values and now let's see how the saturation will uh, affect the values now let's affect the saturation as you can see the less saturated the colors are the less contrast uh, it will kill the contrast between the uh, color the values but if we add saturation it will add more contrast between the values of these colors so saturation also affects the values and the reason why i'm telling you that because Sometimes if you are working on uh, an artwork and you put the values and it's time to start uh, coloring uh, the uh, artwork or let's say you are uh, a photo manipulation artist and you fix the values of your artwork and you start to add or match the colors. Let's say for example you start to add in colors with the levels or the color balance. Uh, if you feel like some uh, colors are off in your artwork or doesn't look right it's uh, always not about the colors sometimes it's because of the values so if you think you are given the objects a um, if you think you are given the objects the correct colors but they don't look correct then that means that the problem is on the values and you need to fix the values not the color so it's important to know the different values for different colors so when you are working on an artwork like for example let's say blue being uh, dark and uh, yellow being bright because as you can see in a lot of artworks when artists paint uh, a landscape and there is a sh uh, sunlight on that uh, landscape they make everything that the sunlight touch in a warm color which is uh, between the uh, yellow and the red and they paint the dark areas especially the front objects with the blue tone which is the uh, darkest and i recommend practicing your eyes with the values of the colors by getting a panel of different colors and uh, add the 
black and white adjustment layer above them and see how the hue and saturation affect the, the colors while are you working on your values of your artwork. If you have made it this far into this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. There's some elements that affect the values. This artwork right here is by Shadi Hamza. Um, this is a landscape of a mountain or a cliff and there's another cliff right here or a mountain. Um, this mountain has a lot of contrast, you can see a lot of details, but with this one there's less contrast and there's less details because it's getting further from our eyes. But the thing is, this mountain is not very far from this area. And the reason why I can tell because as you can see right here you can see this area, you can see some details and this area is connected to this area, so these mountains are in the same uh, area. But why this one has less contrast and less detail shown? It's because it's being affected by the gases in the atmosphere, by let's say uh, the haze, the smoke, the fog and all of these elements. So yeah, these elements will be affecting the value. So if you sample an area from here, you are not really sampling the value of the mountain. You are sampling the um, value of the mountain that's being affected by the haze or the smoke or this um, fog. The other thing that will be affecting your uh, artwork, this artwork is by Peng Zin. As you can see in this area right here, this area here has more details shown and more contrast while these ones are not, even though these areas are supposed to be closer than these areas. The reason being is because there's a, a light source, which is the sun right here. The sun is hitting these areas, and because there's a light cast casting on these areas, you can see more details and more contrast because they are being revealed by the light. So if you have something in the distance that is too far, that you can see uh, a lot of details on it, but there's a light source that hits that area, then this area will show more details just where the light touch. So these are two elements that will be affecting the values, the light sources and the uh, gases. The mistake that I wanted to talk about is that most of the new artists, when they learn the values in the first time, they think it's a must to make every single object in the foreground too dark. Even the brightest area of that uh, object, they make it too dark, like this tree right here, to the point where that object loses a lot of details and loses a lot of contrast too. They make it too dark to the point where it's nearly completely black. In some scenarios, it works if you are working on a night scene or if you are working, or if you are working on a daylight scene and there is an object casting shadows on the foreground objects. Like, for example, this artwork by Mark Therese, make sure to visit his uh, art station. If it was a new artist that is making this artwork, he would have made this plant right here too dark as like this tree. This artwork here by Michael or Michelle, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Make sure to visit this artist on Instagram. This plants in the, for uh, in the foreground, if it was another artist that is new to values, he would have made them too dark where you can't see a lot of details like this black things right here and this texture. And as I told you before, the blue color is used in the dark areas because it has the darkest value. And here we have this artwork by Dominic. And as you can see, this tank in the foreground, it's not completely black. It just has a lot of contrast that if you sample a color from the darkest areas, from the shadow right here, for example, it goes to five, four, between five and four, as you can see. And that's what I mean by has more contrast and not making the whole tank black. As you can see, if I sample the midtones, it goes to 22. And if I sample from the bright areas, let's say this is the bright area right here, it goes to all the way to 30. So remember guys, you don't have to make the foreground objects too dark to the point where you lose all of the details. It not, it's not necessary like that. If the foreground object has a light source that's casting light on them, then they will be bright as bright as areas in the uh, in the midground and the background. What I will suggest is use reference images to know how much dark and bright to make objects in the foreground and the midground, and uh, you go further. Like for example, you can use uh, pictures like this artworks from Mark, turn it into black and white 
and let's say you are working on a forest scene or a jungle scene and you start to add the plants in the foreground then you will know you can just copy from his works and you can sample the values from his works and paint your own values in your scene based on his artwork this is the end of this video i hope you learned something from this tutorial if you have make sure to like this video and also subscribe to the channel also don't forget to follow us on our social medias also don't forget to watch my latest two videos where i made a full artwork from the beginning and without any further ado i will see you in the next tutorials peace